How's it going fam? Welcome back to Erica ZDC and tonight we are going to do a mini pocket dump, talk about a couple things that I've been using the past few days, just chat knives because well you guys haven't seen my pretty face in a couple of days so I figured I'd bless y'all with it. <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> Guys, um, we're going to look at my EDC flashlight that I've been using the past few days, the traditional pocket knife, and my main blade, and just chat a little bit. Um, we went over August test materials yesterday, I think it was. We're going to do the Maximate Native 5 Lightweight and the S30V Sage 5 Lightweight. And we're also using a modded Native 5 Lightweight in Rex 45 for reference throughout the month. We're not going to start that actual testing until August because I need to do the four weeks of consecutive testing to actually get some results. So we're kind of just, you know, wasting time here the rest of July until we get to August. But I have been carrying this Sage 5 Lightweight the past few days, just putting it through some general tasks nothing crazy. Um, we all know that the Sage 5 Lightweight is very slicey, very lightweight, has a wonderful compression lock, really um, just a great EDC knife. There's really nothing to complain about with the Sage 5, and it's interesting to me that this knife is fairly underrated in the community. You don't hear a lot of people talking about the Sage series. We're always talking about the, the paramilitary series, the Native 5 series, um, the Delica, but we don't talk about the Sage much, and I'm not sure why, because in, in my opinion, out of all of the Spyderco models, the Sage is kind of the unspoken king. If you think about it, it hits all of the sweet spots for what we want out of an EDC knife. It's the perfect size, it's lightweight, thin slicey blade, but not too thin, really nice blade profile, we have wonderful height, easy deployment, um, great blade steel options, you can get these in Maximate, S30V, M4, um, awesome replacement clips, it's just very comfortable and ergonomic, forward choil with jimping, like all of the things that we want out of an EDC blade, the Sage 5 has, and for some reason we don't talk about it much, I'm not really sure why. It's a really fantastic model. One of my favorites that I have a good amount of experience with, I had the Sage 3, which was the Blackie Collins bolt action one. I ended up, you know, giving that to a friend, which I should have never done, but I did. Um, I've had the uh, Titanium one, and I've also had the Gray G10 remake with the Maximate and this, and a Sage 5 Lightweight exclusive from Blade HQ with the black um, M4 blade. So a whole bunch of Sage series knives, and they're, they're all just awesome. I really, really like them. So I'm excited to do a full review on this and test it for a month. I will say the S30V just seems way better done than a lot of S30V, and I know that there's a rumor that S30V from um, Spyderco is chippy and I just that is kind of funny to me because I think Benchmade's S30V tends to be chippy and overheated and trash um, so Spyderco's S30V I've never had issues with it actually tends to be very nice I've been using this like crazy and it's still extremely toothy extremely sharp and when I accidentally cut into the driveway when I was doing some cardboard processing. It definitely got damaged, understandably, but it didn't chip. It just seemed to kind of like crush and roll as opposed to literally just chip out like bench baits. So, so far this knife is just awesome. I really, really enjoy this. I think it's a great iteration of this, the Sage. I really like the compression lock as opposed to like the back lock or the um, liner lock even the Reeve Integral lock that they did. It's just a very cool knife. Really, really comfortable. So that's been fun to use lately. It's a great slicer. I, I absolutely love this thing. I have also been carrying the Case Sodbuster Jr. in 
mahogany peach seed jigged bone covers. This is a beautiful knife that was recently delivered from Knife Center. I had pre-ordered it, um, I believe in April maybe. So we've been using this. Mine came with really good fit and finish and I've been using the absolute crap out of this. It is very dark. This carbon steel has darkened up more than a lot of my carbon steel from case. So that's just really looking beautiful. We have sent that to Teener Town. Has the patina, patina, patina. Absolutely stunning. Really holding an edge well too. Very, very nice. Um, you gotta love a Sodbuster Jr., right? I mean, everyone should have one of these. I think everyone should carry one. It's one of the best EDC knives I've ever used. Really a pleasure to carry and use for food prep and stuff like that. And this mahogany jigged bone is just stunning. As always with Case, you have to be careful buying them because you will absolutely get a lemon most of the time. I don't know how I got one that's so good because I know people that definitely got some pretty terrible ones, but I got lucky this round and I have a beautifully centered Sodbuster Jr. with wonderful fit and finish. Absolutely gorgeous. Just look at that. If you haven't picked up a Sodbuster yet, please do. Really, everyone should have one in their collection and use them. Um, Smoky Mountain Knife Works seems to have the best selection. They're like the world's largest case dealer, I believe. I got this, like I said, from Knife Center and I pre-ordered it, but um, a lot of case knives are in stock very often at Smoky Mountain, so just a heads up. This one's riding in a gorgeous Richter Knives slip. I don't believe he's taking orders right now as he is trying to catch up on his custom orders, but as soon as he opens his books again, please go place an order with him. Michael Richter makes the world's best leather slips. You will not find anything better. We want him doing leather work full time by the end of the year, and we are the ones that are going to get him there. So please contact him via his Instagram DMs when his books open, place an order with him because you will not regret having a Richter Knives slip in your possession. Uh, the last thing that I've been carrying often is this little tiny Surefire EDC light. This is the Titan, but this is the smaller one. I was unaware that they made two Titans until this one came in from my friend Mike, who is my guardian angel. Mike, I love you. You're perfect for me. This is the little tiny Titan. I also have the longer one. It's about that long and it's silver, but this one is a little tiny guy. I'm not sure of the differences. It might be the lumen count or something, or maybe the throw, but either way, this is a little tiny pocket light, very nicely made, made in the USA by Surefire. We all love Surefire lights. I have the EDC 1-LT, whatever it is, which is another phenomenal light, but this is a little tiny guy. Um, just been carrying this one lately. Really, really nice. I will probably do a review on it, but it's obviously going to be very similar to the review I did on the other Titan that I have, because aside from the length, there really aren't that many differences. Sorry for the dogs barking. They're playing outside. Um, but that's kind of all I have for you guys today. I just wanted to check in, see how everyone's doing. Um, yeah, not much to it. I got to get back to the dogs because they're they're played in the yard and they're loud there's a runner going by but um yeah i will see you guys on the next video let me know down in the comments what you've been carrying what you've acquired lately for knives um just let me know how life is guys i will see you on the next video i love you so much go use your shit learn how to sharpen your knives and i will see you so soon take care